That's our praise team. God of hope in the hopeless time, grant us a resilient hope this morning. Everyone, embrace us disappointment and discouraged hearts and fill them with your love and wisdom. God of goodness and strength, send your Holy Spirit to redeem and renew. God of all people, call us once more to your fullness and oneness. Let us worship in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. Each face and earth and as well to make known. The wicked oppressing, no cease from distressing, sing praises to his name, he forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us, our God with us. 
us joining, ordaining the dead in his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning. Now, Lord, we start our self-life, oh, glory be thine. Beside us, Calde, the leader in battle, and pray thou stand, our defender wilt be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation, thy name be ever great, O Lord, make us free. Thank you, Ania. That was beautiful. And now is the time for our controlled chaos, uncontrolled chaos. I'd like uh, everybody to unmute your microphone, and I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a moment so that you could uh, be full screen, and hopefully you're in gallery view, and you can see everybody who's here, and everybody can say hello. To Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Unmute yourself, please. Good unmute yourself, everybody. Good morning. Hello. Blessings. Unmute. Blessings. Hi, Guillermo. Peace. Hello, Hi. Hello, Hi. Nice Hi. To see you. Hi. Hello oh, Neva. Hi, Mrs. Callen. Neva. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Wonderful. Hi. Jewel. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello, everybody. Oh, that's a lot of fun. where love can dwell and all can safely live a place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive built of hopes and dreams and visions rock of faith and vault of grace here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. This is the uh, prayer of the people. This is where if you have anything to lift up to the Lord, any kind of a, a, a need, a concern. And... I'd like to lift up uh, uh, two people that have cancer, that are fighting cancer right now. One is a pastor, uh, his name is Melvin, and one is a, a, a personal friend, Arturo, who are fighting cancer, and I'd like to uh, lift them up in my prayer. Lord, we lift up Melvin and Arturo, both uh, fighting this dreaded disease, cancer. We ask that you give them comfort, give their family and friends comfort, give their doctors the, the wisdom and uh, the treatment. It is your will for Melvin and Arturo, um, both uh, your children and your servants. And we ask that you um, just put your healing hands over them and give them what they need to beat cancer once and for all. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you. Anyone, anyone else? Lift up. Um, I'm sure many of us know somebody who has perhaps tested positive for COVID-19. Um, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to lift all of those people up those we know, those we don't know during this time and the reason why we're having these online church settings. Um, if we could just keep all of those people in our prayers, especially uh, those who are 
particularly susceptible to the disease and, and at a greater mortality risk, uh, we'd like to lift them up to the Lord. Uh, Jesus, please, we, uh, hear, we lift up all of those who are currently um, either suffering or know that they're positive and are, are filled with concern because they don't know what's next. We pray that you keep them healthy. We pray that you um, give people the wisdom to be safe out there and to, and to wear their masks and to distance themselves so that we could um, take care of this and, 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 and slow it and, and perhaps uh, be safe enough to the point where we get a vaccine. We know it's happening for a reason. We don't understand the reason, but we know that you know what you're doing. And we ask that you give us the patience to wait for your time and your wisdom on all of this. And for those who are in the hospital, that you uh, put your healing hands over them. Lord, hear our prayer. Anybody else with a, uh, something you'd like to lift up to the Lord? Um, we have a friend who's expecting to deliver a baby in the next few weeks. And so just with the hospital and, you know, what we're seeing happen, um, we'd love to lift her name. Her name is Andrea. Okay. And Lord, we lift up Andrea. She's expecting a baby. The hospital is, yeah. uh, is, is an area where, where we're worried about going to the hospital these days because of COVID-19 and, and, uh, having a baby is already a stressful situation and no one needs additional stress, of course, but we ask that you uh, calm Andrea's nerves, give her the, the confidence and the knowledge that you're watching over her, uh, her baby and the process when that newborn arrives, uh, another child of your kingdom. Lord, we, we ask for your blessings for Andrea and for the new baby and for their family and uh, give them peace as they uh, await that blessed moment when the baby arrives. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, pray with me once again and this is a beautiful picture that the people gathered together in an extended uh, sanctuary your home being the sanctuary and you being there is the message from God to all of us and for that we are grateful in my prayer I would like to share uh, my hero when I was in a seminary some time ago. Um, the prayer of serenity will be the part of uh, my prayer. Uh, it's a very timely prayer uh, with the challenges and unpredictability we have. Uh, just about every angle of our understanding of reality, we can go way too pessimistic. But at the same time, we have a call to be courageous and go beyond the fear and do what we believe it is the, uh, the call from Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray 
not for happiness, but for strength to understand who you are and what it means to be the daughters and son of our Father God and Mother Spirit and the Son and guide us and heal us and to restore the confidence in you and these challenges will make us mature, make us grow to understanding what it means to be the child of yours. We are every Sunday, every day, becoming a church, the body of your son, Jesus Christ. And in that process, the blessings and deeper understanding of becoming your daughter and your son. God grant me and grant us the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. And a wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as he did this simple, sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if we surrender to his will, that we may be reasonably happy in this life and streamably, streamably, stream happiness with him forever in the next. For this worship, and for our praying, praying hearts, we lift up the prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So then brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it isn't an obligation to ourselves to live our lives on the basis of selfishness. If you live on the basis of selfishness, you are going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death the actions of the body, you will live. All those who are led by God's spirit are God's sons and daughters. You didn't receive a spirit of slavery to lead you back again into fear, but you received a spirit that will, shows you you are adopted as his children. With his spirit we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. But if we are children, we are also heirs. We are God's heir and fellow heirs with Christ. If we really suffer with him so that we can also be glorified with him, I believe that the present suffering is nothing compared to the coming glory that is going to be revealed to us. The whole creation waits breathless with anticipation for the revelation of God's sons and daughters. Creation was su subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, it was a choice of the one who subjected it, but in the hope that the creation itself will be set free from slavery to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of God's children. And we know that the whole creation is groaning together and suffering labor pains up until now. And it's not only the creation. We ourselves who have the spirit as the first crop of the harvest also groans inside as we wait to be adopted and for our bodies to be set free. We were saved in hope. If we, if we see what we hope for, that isn't hope. Who hopes for what they already see? But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. 
Oh, gracious God, your word, may it be alive in our everyday lives. Your presence will cause us to be courageous in the time of fear. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. One of the things that that we do often, and there is a tremendous amount of the temptation as we believe in something that is not visible. It is something that goes beyond our rationales many a times, then we do have two temptations. One, the religion has its lust and temptation of certainty. We don't want to guess and we don't want to pray so many hours to hear the voice of yours. Oh God, we pray. We want everything certain. It is so black and white that we can understand what it is that we want to want to understand. But at the same time, the call continues to happen in a deeper way that as I shared last week, there is a mysterium trusting and believing in God contains in its RNA or DNA that there is a uncertainty and we do not know that we always look for certainty. The time such as this one, we pray for vaccine and we pray for the obvious um, development of in, in a medicine and, and other uh, areas to fix this thing for certain, with a certainty. And the second temptation that we always have when we say, I confess that I believe in God that I never seen, is immediacy. As we pray, we pray with not only certainty, but also immediacy. There's so many places in the Bible that people ask something's done right away. And then God looked as if God is always silent and invisible. Therefore, the second temptation, the lust of religion comes to us and say, don't you want everything certain? And don't you want everything be done as soon as you finish your prayers. But I have to tell you folks that there is a, such a thing called the religion of not knowing. This may be the time that we need to learn how to listen to God in silence where there's always room of your faith inserted in their prayers that oh god i do not know what is happening but i trust you there is always a combat or a fight resist to the certainty and immediacy and i think it is important for us to learn every day such a time as this one You know, it's about uh, 450 years before what we call common era. The Confucius uh, paraphrased this one in, in a four different uh, letters. It's, it's so interesting. It's called Kyung Yi Wan Ji. In Chinese, that means love God, but always keep a distance. Now, let me, wow, what is this? This is uh, something different than we often hear. Love and respect God, 
but keep a distance. Right here, the, he is not talking about having the distance between ourselves and divinity all the time without no reason, but there is a reason. He understood about 2,600 years ago that it is necessary for us to believe in deity, the God. There has to be a sense of including, embracing something we do not know. And some of folks are saying that I pray hard, we're so late to the church that somehow God made things happen so that every time I go to intersection, my light was always green. Praise God, God, God gives me a, a chance not to stop, but going to church with all green lights so that I was able to be in the, in the worship. You may say that, but I have to say that Gangyi Wanji, love God, but keep a distance, is, is for us to, it, it is to invite us to be mature and have a deeper understanding of what it means to love God and love your neighbors. It goes beyond intentionally what we call the lust of certainty and immediacy. And there, the Psalm 46, this poet reads this way in summary of what he's, his, when he, he faces the, the mysterium, the mystery of faith. And he calls, attention all, see the marvels of God. He plants flowers and trees all over the earth, bands war from pole to pole, breaks all weapons across his knees, step out of the traffic, take a long, loving look at me, your high God above politics, above everything. When we face what is happening around us, we want to have a certainty and immediacy. But the Psalter reads this way, stop, step out of the traffic, take a long and loving look at me, your high God above politics, above everything that we experience. You heard the text reading called God Abba, meaning that I have God with the intimate relationship. I do not worship God as a part-time, as a distanced one, but it is to love God with maturity, love God of deeper understanding of what it means to be a believer. Therefore, the redeeming hope that we want to remember by touching these verses is that the hope should start with the deeper understanding as to what it means to love God and keeping the distance. Loving God, but God is no longer my divine secretary. God is not the one that will answer me in my want with certainty and immediacy, especially with this challenging time that we do not know how the future holds. This is the time that we start practicing our redeeming hope. Number one, love God in a real way. Liberate yourself from certainty, the lust of certainty and immediacy, and listen to what God has to say. Step out of the traffic and take a long, loving look at me, your high God. And beyond the contents of immediacy and contents of certainty of how you believe who God is. It is so hard when we hope something, 
we want something's done according to my request fast. And I do not know exactly how long this pandemic will go. One thing I know is that God is not the cause of, cause of it. God himself is struggling with this. Whatever the message of the reality that surrounds us, it is so clear that we need to keep in touch with God in a selfless, uh, selflessness is going beyond the selfish request. Practice hope, especially if it is the redeeming practice of hope. You start with God. You start with God in a mature and deeper understanding as to what it means to hold faith in my heart and breathe in, breathe without every moment and inviting the spirit, inviting God to our lives. The Chinese uh, word again, one more time, and then, and then I'll go to Greek and Deutsch and whatnot later on. But for now, one more. They call it so man. That means, so means calling. I call man hope. In other words, I, I want to have hope and hope in their words, meaning a joyous anticipation. I want this so that I anticipate and expect that good thing will happen to me. And it is always true that we have a scheme of believing God, that God is all powerful, all knowing and all good so that the pandemic such as this one and the loss of innocent lives should not happen, but it does. It happens. And it teaches us one more time that hope that we learn today through Paul's letter, the hope is not a denial of fate, of pain, but strength to overcome. And when we pray, we pray not for convenience of life, not for happiness, but for strength. The reason for that is because whether you pray or not, the suffering, the pain will be the part of your journey. However many times you want to avoid that and run away from it, I can guarantee you that the pain will be always there. The suffering will, will not succumb to non-reality at all. And this is the reason that the Paul is saying to us that endurance produces character. When we hear the word endurance, that presuppose something that is not right something that is wrong. Endurance could be something that you need to, you need to suffer yet, yet sustain yourself with that pain. That will create a character. And the character pro produce hope. Hope is not coming from a chanting or or putting down what you want and let God know this, this is my menu list and I am expecting you to provide me with those requests. But hope presuppose the endurance. Endurance presuppose the presence of pain 
and presence of suffering. Character that itself is, is a, a, a type of a distinctive individual ability to, to deal with the reality. That character, if the character include and embrace the pain, then the hope is a possibility. And I, I interpret it this way, I put it down and I wanna read it to you. The, the phrase that endurance produces character and character produces hope. And I wrote this way, in our inevitable suffering in life and its interpretation and our honest recognition produces how we interpret God's presence with and in us. And that enables us to open to possibilities of life and faith. If the next moment is gonna be birth of yours, your second birthday happens all the time because of God's word and your understanding of, of how you believe and trust in God, you must be able to say that I hope, I practice my hope, not being selfishly naive, but expecting the suffering and pain. And Eugene Peterson, Reverend Eugene Peterson, who rewrote the whole gospel called message is saying that we are never left feeling shorthanded. Quite the contrary, we cannot round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pour into our lives through the Holy Spirit. This statement of triumphant is preceded by the feeling of being shorthanded. Hope is not an option, but an inseparable part of being alive. And you can imagine the story of Job at this point. The Job is the righteous man that everybody respected. And in his chapter, 14. Oh, by the way, Job is not a historical book. Job is part of a wisdom, a literature. That means that it has nothing to do with historical event, but it is the story that is shared with us. And is saying that indeed there is a hope for a tree. If it is cut down and is still sprouting and its shoots do not fail. And Job is confessing that yes, cut the tree and tree is myself, but are always still sprouting and its shoots do not fail. So sisters and brothers in Christ, as we gather together, hoping that one of these days, it is free for us to free to shake hands and hugs. But we continue to practice the redeeming hope in God by saying that this could be a suffering, but at the same time, invitation to be mature. And to practice the redeeming hope. The next item that Paul talks in the text today is to say, if you want to have a redeeming hope that is realistic yet courageous, the redeeming hope that you have to endure yet gives you hope is to say that every hope has to be patient hope. The hope needs patience. 
And as I said before in the beginning, when we face the certainty and immediacy, listen to what Hebrew has to say. The Hebrew said that hope and faith are interdependent. And if you want to hope, you, your hope has to be reaching the point where you cannot see it. But I know it's coming. And, and knowing that it's coming to you without visibility, the thing that you must have for, for practicing redeeming hope is to be patient. The patient so that the practice will be true and real with God. It is not a compromise. It is a reality. So brothers and sisters, that let us continue to to remember this Paul's letter to you and a letter to the Roman Christians. Practice the redeeming hope in Christ. To do that, let God graduate from the school of genies or school of divine secretary or security. Hearing Eugene's word one more time. Being intimate with God is not to be spooky and dodging all the bad things or harms while others are, are suffering from that. And you're so lucky, divine protection and God being your security officer, security guard. But we hear one more time, step out of the traffic and take a long, loving look at me. I am your high God going beyond your certainty and immediacy. Hope is not a denial of pain, but strength to overcome. The second item that I shared with you was that embrace the pain. If you take cross seriously, you cannot really say that because of the symbol I have of crucifixion and bunch of uh, garlics, the bad luck is not going to happen. No, it's a lot bigger than that. It is to say that the pain is part of glory. The oxymoron is constantly happening. And as we accept that, we may be able to be on a path to understanding God correctly and deeply. The last one, I'm, I'm repeating myself for you to understand and and hoping that you will always think about this. Practice redeeming hope in Christ is a assuring invisibility. I, I say that word, assuring is something that you grab and you know for fact that it will happen. But the condition there is invisibility, see? The Christian faith has been you know, a chanting of sacred music or words of Augustus, Augustine and words of Anselm and words of Paul and the words of so many theologians We're trying to say, we are, we are assured that that is coming, but it's not visible for you. Therefore, you must be patient. And the willingness to say yes to this is the beginning point of practicing the redeeming hope. We need this, especially times such as this one. We practice the redeeming hope with 
assuring invisibility. Again, it is oxymoron. It is assuring, but not visible. Therefore, you are inv invited to the sacredness of patience. Suffering is always same, but the sufferer's interpretation is different. The invitation from Paul is clear to our, us. Embrace God in a real way. Liberate yourself from the lust of certainty and immediacy. And make sure that we always touch and feel in my fingertip the assuring invisibility. These are the gifts from God to you and to me this morning. Amen. I talked with the, um, they had a chance to talk with Neva uh, briefly about uh, the giving and the record of mine. And the part of me is a frustrating thing that because of the fact that I, I moved from pristine place called Hawaii to here, they, they, the, the one of the banks is, all, is that as I deposit, they hold it for 14 days so that it, 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 it is so, so frustrating for me to release and participate in giving. And now I realize that giving thanks and praise itself is not your obligation, but it is a wonderful opportunity for you to participate in kingdom uh, building. And this is your opportunity to give thanks and praise. So remember and find the way to participate in this giving thanks and praise. Phil? Thank you, Pastor, and a wonderful sermon. Uh, everybody, if you are curious about how to uh, give at this time, of course, you could always mail checks to uh, the church. Um, the address is easy to find on our website. It's also something that you can Google, uh, but uh, it's also in the... Uh, uh, directories that you've received over the years. Um, and if you want to give online, let me just show you real quick on our website, wilmingtonfumc.org. Um, if you just wait for this little carousel of photos here to cycle through, there's one that has a little button on it, and it's coming up right now. There it is. God loves a cheerful giver. If you click on that give, it's the same as if on any page you find one of these little buttons right here. And I'm going to click on one of those right now. And I think you see this. You can immediately select how much you want to give. Um, if you could select if you want to tithe or uh, give for family promise or for a birthday or several different things the general fund uh, for uh, youth, um, Methodist women, Methodist men, and then you just put in your card number and uh, make sure the last thing that you do is you put in your zip code. And then if you need to leave a little note, you can do that. You could choose whether to cover the fees. Uh, there's a small fee in, involved with the, the service that's provided. And then you click uh, give and then the money goes more or less directly into our bank account, the church's bank account, and it's a secure giving process. Um, and uh, again, it's easy to find on almost every page, you're gonna see these little buttons that say give, or on the front page, there it is right there. You can click on it and it takes you to the same thing. So um, that's how you give online. And there's also an app for that. And there's a there's more information on our website about that as well. Uh, so if the Spirit moves you, let the Holy Spirit move you to support our church. Uh, we still have expenses at this time. Um, they don't go away during the pandemic. And so um, your, uh, 
your generous donations are, are always welcome. Um, thank you very much. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God enables us so that we can do this journey. At times the burden is heavy. It is an uphill walk all the time, it seems. But this is the time for us to practice our hope. Practice the redeeming hope as we learn today, let that, that, let that be engraved in our heart and our spirit. May God's blessing be always with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you so much.